Okay, welcome everyone to Unit 1 Lesson 3, Slopes and Average Rates of Change. The biggest difference between this lesson now and this lesson before is the verbal description of the average rate of change. So you will have to pay very close attention and write down very good notes when we start giving a verbal description of the average rate of change. We've been doing that multiple times in calculus this year thus far. So we will refer to the infamous stick man through our discussion of slopes of lines and equations of lines. So please become familiar with stick man. Stick man is in your interactive uh, notebook. So stick man is certainly famous in the study of differential calculus. Please refer to the stick man handout that follows this lesson. We'll talk about that. And I was thinking about Stickman. I wrote Stickman the very first year I taught down in Gallatin County, Kentucky. It was like 1998. And I don't think it has been revised much at all. I, I don't think it is. So that was a pretty cool thing because I've been using it for a long time. Okay, so we're going to consider the points A, X sub 1, Y sub 1, and B, X sub 2, Y sub 2, where X sub 2 is greater than Y sub 1. And what that means is that, this is important, what that means is that we're always going to talk about, the second point is always going to be to the, to the right of the first point. So X sub 2 is always going to be greater than X sub 1. We don't know, uh, we know that B is going to be to the right of A, but B could be above or below A depending on their Y coordinates. So we're going to have, if I were going to look at this, this could be A. And B could be here, or B could be possibly here, too, on the coordinate. We don't know if it's up or down. That's what that's talking about. And that's going to help us when we uh, think about the slope of the line, which the slope of the line, the slope M of the line through points A and B, is certainly going to be the change in Y values divided by the change in X values, which is we're going to call delta Y over delta X, the rise or fall over the run. The run is always going to be positive because x sub 2 is greater than x sub 1. So we will use this notation multiple times next year in calculus and later on this year, delta y over delta x. So if we consider here where y sub 2 is greater than y sub 1, and keep in mind this is always going to be true, we define that to be true, then delta y is going to be greater than 0, b is above a, and delta y over delta x is going to be greater. In other words, stick man is going to walk uphill. The slope of the line is positive. The y values increase as the x values increase. Boop, 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 walking uphill. So if the slope is positive, stick man is walking uphill, and we will demo that on stick man here in a little bit. If the y value right here is lower, if the second y value is lower than the first y value. This is always going to happen. We defined it that way. What? Then delta y is going to be less than 0. Delta y, this change in y is going to be negative. B is below A, and the slope is going to be negative. In other words, stick man is going to go walk downhill. The y values are going to decrease did this right here, the y values are going to decrease as the x values increase. Okay, if y sub 2 is equal to y sub 1, x does is always going to happen the way we define it. But if y sub 2 is equal to y sub 1, then delta y is 0, the, stick, the slope of 0, the change of y is 0, therefore this fraction is 0. And stick man neither walks up or down, the slope is zero, and he just does this. If the y values are the same, then you would have this be here. Boop. And stick man would go. And we, the slope of the line is zero. You have seen stick man before. All of you have seen stick man. Luke, do you have a stick man? All right, if y sub 2 does not equal y sub 1, now here's the case where if these are not equal and x sub 2 is equal to x sub 1, and here we're not going to let that happen, 
Then A and B are on the same vertical line. Boop. Same x value, A. Same x value, B. The y's are different. Then we're on this vertical line, and the slope is undefined. Does that line exist? That line exists, but, in, but the slope is undefined. The slope of a vertical line in xy land is undefined. And a stick man falls into the abyss of infinity. The slope is undefined. The x value is constant. What, what, what hap? Hmm. What, what happens if y sub two is equal to y sub one and x sub two is equal to x sub one? They're the same point, so it doesn't make sense about talking about the slope of a line because it's the same point, and you don't even know what's going on because it's just all dark. So I think that. Here is Stickman. So you can, when Stickman is in the, it is in the back of your book, isn't it? So let's talk about Stickman like right now. Yeah, this is Stickman. Yeah, this is the uh, uh, addendum to Stickman that I made. And I don't think this part here, is this part here on your stick man? I don't think it is. It is? That part's on stick man? Okay, so what I, all that theory, all that abstractness that I just talked about is very simple. Stick man lives in XY lane. He can disappear and disappear at your whim. You can boo, boo, disappear, and then you make him appear, make him, oh, appear, and then, oop, disappear. If Stickman is walking online, here's here's the thing about using Stickman. Stickman all he walks on lines, but always walks from the left to the right. So he's always walking in that direction. He's always walking, and that, that's why I define the second x coordinate to be greater, so that he's always walking from the left to the right. He's always walking in that direction. If Stickman is walking online, he's walking uphill, then the slope of the line is positive. If said man walking on line, walking downhill, hope a line negative. If stick man is walking on the line, but he's neither walking up nor walking down, then the slope of the line is zero. And the equation of the line is y equals b. We're going to be talking about those constant lines, those, con those uh, constant functions, y is equal to b, where b is some constant. If stick man encounters a line he can't walk on, he can't walk on, that is, he is falling into the abyss of infinity. Then the slope of the line is undefined, and the equation of the line is x equals a. There is a line, but the slope is undefined. You can use stick man mostly to determine the slope of the line, positive, negative, zero, undefined. But we can either use stick man to help find the actual slope of the line. I don't think we're going to worry about that right now. So. Here he, here he is. Here's the uh, very first pick of Stickman written in 1998. Stickman's walking uphill. The slope of the line is positive. Stickman's walking downhill. Do you notice how he's walking this direction? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Hey, what's up? So this line right here is given by y equals b. That line is y equals b. The slope of the line negative. Slope of the line is positive. And here he's falling into the abyss of infinity, and that has a lot to do with uh, with calculus as well. Because what we're and it's going to be a have it's going to have a lot to do with what we're talking about when we talk about rational functions too. Because whatever you're going to be dividing by zero, and that's undefined or it will go to infinity as x approaches some number a. That slope goes to infinity, and that's why he's falling into the abyss of infinity, and we don't have to worry about what I just said. We'll talk more about that later. Okay, so this is very easy. Positive slope, negative slope, zero slope, no slope. Slope undefined. See, you can always use stick man. Little stick man's got a little backpack on him right here. To actually find the slope. Because if you have this point right here, negative 4, negative 3, and this point 2, 4, all you have to do is count how far up he would have to walk up. He's going to have to walk up 7 to the right 6, and that slope is 7, 6. 
and we'll talk about the equation of that line later. Or you can use the formula that we're about to give you. So we go back to the first part of the problems. I thought it was a good idea. Oh, right here is the slope formula. So this is, we're going to do some analytical slopes. Right here is the slope formula. Don't forget that. Okay, find the slope of the line containing the points and give a graphical representation of the slope. We're going to use Stickman to give a graphical representation of the slope. So first of all, the slope of, and we're going to go back to geometry, and we're going to denote that as the line AB, is going to be, and we can let this be x sub 2, y sub 2. This is going to be x sub 1, y sub 1. Very simply, it's going to be negative 15 minus 7 over 5 minus negative 4. Oh my goodness gracious, you have studied the slope formula for a long, long time. No, 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 yes. So I believe that's going to be, check my arithmetic, negative 22 over 9. Negative 22 ninths. Is my arithmetic correct? Is it? Okay, very good. So here's a graphical representation of this, and you want to put this in here. And one thing I don't want you to do is to scale all of your lines with marks. I see that all the time with elementary mathematics students, and you still are elementary mathematics students because we're just beginning to study mathematics. Actually, mathematics starts with calculus. So I see a lot of people doing this in counting. You don't have to do that. Just plot the points. We know that point right there, x is negative, y is positive. It's going to be somewhere in quadrant two. So just put him anywhere you want to put him. Let's put him, and we can kind of uh, negative 4, 7. We'll kind of put him right here. We'll put A right there. And we're not going to scale that out, okay? And B is going to be 5, negative 15. So we're going to go about 5. I'm going to erase those because those are making me mad. Negative 5, or 5, negative 15. So he's going to be somewhere down here, B is. And what I want is the slope of this line right here. <clears throat> I'll do the line in blue. I want the slope of that line. Here's the graphical representation of that. Old stick man is going to go what? Hey, if I were going to find the distance of the segment AB, what point would that be? Billy, you are correct, Billy. That point would be negative 4 comma negative 15. If I were going to. I'm not going to. But if I were going to, so we might use that. So how far is it from 7 to negative 15? How far did I go? Stickman had to go down 22, yay or nay. And that's what we're saying, down 22. And then how far to the right does Stickman have to go to get from negative 4 to 5? What is that distance? That distance is 5 minus negative 4, so he's going to go right 9. And that's the graphical representation of the slope of that line. Down 22, right 9. Okay? All next page. Boop. <clears throat> this 
is what's going to be new for everybody, this verbal explanation of the average rate of change. I think we did a few of these problems in Algebra 2 last year. I'm not sure where I had you verbally describe, but we're going to be very, 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 very specific in this verbal explanation of the average rates of change because it's so prevalent in the study of calculus. The average rate of change from point A to point B is simply the slope of the line through A, B, with one huge exception. When talking about average rate of change, you must include the units. You must, must, must include the units. And sometimes, if we're not doing an application, the units might just be Y units and X units, horizontal units, vertical, vertical units, horizontal units. And, but we're still going to write them, units of the vertical, units of the horizontal. When we do describe our average rate of change, we certainly are going to continue to write them. Example two, little Susie is on a road trip. When she is two hours from home, she is 23 miles from home. When she is two hours from home, she is 23 miles from home. And when she is five hours from home, she is 51 miles from home. What is little Susie's average rate of change from hour two to hour five? So for this example, we will let hours represent the horizontal axes. So this is going to be hours. And we're going to write down here hours. And the miles will represent the vertical. So over here, we're going to go miles. Okay. When we look at two hours, she is 23 miles. And then we're going to go up to 50 miles at hour five. We're going to kind of... Uh, we are going to scale now. Since we're going up to 50, we're going to go scales at 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And our scale here is going to be 10 miles. This, the vertical is going to be miles and the horizontal hours. And we're only going from two hours to five hours. So we're going to let the horizontal be hours. One, Two, and we're going to scale them in just ones. Three, four, five. So we're going to graph two hours. She is 23 miles. So when she's about right here, we're going to do these uh, points in green. So she's going to be about right here. It's the first time. When she's left home, two hours after she left home, she's 23 miles. So that point right there is going to be two comma 23 two hours 23 miles and then when she's five miles from home five hours she's going to be 51 miles so she's going to be up here about here and i mentioned it and that point is going to be five comma 51. So, we want an analytical solution. What is little Susie's average rate of change from hour two to hour five? And we want an analytical solution. Get out of there. We want a graphical representation, and we want a verbal explanation to this problem. And I have everything done for you here except for the verbal explanation. So, here's the analytical. The average rate of change from hour two to hour five is going to be the change in miles over the change in hours. So 51 minus 23 miles, five minus two hours. This is going to be about 9.33 miles per hour. That's your average rate of change. The graphical explanation, the graphical representation is going to be just similar to what we did. And we're going to go this says she went to the right and then she went up and this is the so we're going to go up but do we go up we went up what's 51 minus 23 we went up 51 minus 23 is that 29 is that 29 
and we want write 3. It's not 29, is it? Okay, so this is up 28, right 3. That's the graphical representation. So here is the, this is the important part. This is the verbal explanation. And this is what's going to be new to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to write out the words on average, because this is an average rate of change. On average, from t equals 2 to t equals 5, Susie, what did she do? She traveled, she rode. Do they talk about what she's doing? They don't really talk about what she's doing here, do they? She's on a road trip. So we're just going to say Susie traveled. On average, from t equals 2 to t equals 5, Susie traveled 9.33 miles per hour. You travel 9.33 miles per hour. Now my question is, so let's do the final part of this lesson where it says to sketch the scenario where Susie left home at 9 and started to return home at 3. Be sure and use correct units. So we're going to still, she's going to go hours. And it's going to be miles. And miles from home. We're going to let this be miles from home. And I think that's what we did before. So if she left home at 9 in the morning, she's going to start right here. And we're going to let 0 on the horizontal be 9 a.m. We're going to let that be 9. And so we're going to go 10, 11, 12, 1, two, three, four. So these are going to be hours again. Five, six, seven. And at 3 p.m. she started to go home. We don't know. It does not tell us in this problem stem how far she went from nine to three. Only that her average rate of change was the same going home as it was going away from home, saying going home as it was away from home. So now she's going away from home. We'll just say she went to here. She went this far. And here's going to be her average rate of change. Here's a bam. At three, she turns around and goes home, and she's at the same. So how? What? where do I want this? And she's doing the same rate of change on the way home. Where's that line going to hit the uh, horizontal axis at? If she spent three hours going away from home, how long is she going to sp spend going to home, back to home? Three, correct? And I got to tell you that this particular problem, 